Okay, we're gonna move on to her skin, and for skin tones, um, there's a few colors you can use. I'll show you my favorites. For the darkest shadowed part of a skin, I always use E11. Um, my mid-tone is always E00. And then my lightest color is E000. A lot of people also like to use E21. It's a little bit peachier. Um, I don't tend to use it as often. It's not a bad color. Um, E50 and E51 are not bad either. It's just that these particular three are my favorite and I use them the most. I also use R20 for my blush for cheeks. I also sometimes use R81. It's a little bit of a more purple tone. This is much pinker. Uh, just depends on what I feel like doing that particular day. So again, with my skin, I'm going to lay down my darkest color. Obviously, this side of her face is going to be lighter since the light is hitting her there. So I'm going to put some shadows on her skin on the right hand side here because this would definitely be darker. I'm actually going to come down like this and probably you know a little bit under her hair is going to be lighter in this area on her chest. Also, on her hand, the light's going to be hitting up here at the top. So around the back side, I'm going to add the darker shadow. The light again is going to hit this side of her hand. So I'm going to make the part that's close to her body a little darker. Also where it bends around the basket. Legs, same thing. I'm just going to kind of color towards this way. Then I'm going to take my mid-tone, which is E00, and I'm going to go over what I did and forward, leaving some area right there for the lightest color. I'm just going to lay this color down. I'm not really going to blend yet. legs I'm just going to go ahead and fill in. And then I'm going to take my lightest color which is E00 and I'm going to lay this color down. And I'm going to blend it up to the E00. This color does not blend well with the E11. Um, it's so light it will actually push the E11 up and leave a harsh line so you definitely want to use a middle tone and E00 is great for that. Um, but I use this to blend into the E00. So then to blend I'm going to take my E00 again and I'm just working in my circles, working forward a bit. I want to make sure I don't have a lot of lines in my face. Going down on my hands and doing the same thing. I'm not coloring all the way over where my lightest tone is, just just towards it. So I really want that to be the lightest. And you might have to go over and blend it a few times. I'm gonna go back in with my E00. Just blend that up a little bit. laying down some more color. I'm really taking my middle tone again and just... You can do this as many times as you want. I just don't like lines in my face. I don't like to see a strong line where you've changed color. Of course that doesn't look natural. And that's how I would do my skin. And then for her cheeks, I would take R20. I'm going to lay down a little bit more on this side because of course it's shadowed, so we need a little bit more. And here I'm going to do just a light, just a little bit. And then I don't like to leave my cheeks harsh. I kind of equivalent it to wearing makeup. You don't want to look like you have this 
harsh line of blush on your cheeks. So I'll just go in and work over it with my lightest E000. And blend this one in with my E0. And I want to make a note, I don't know if you can see this, but when you blend, a lot of times when you're blending, 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 you can push the color out of the lines. Um, not a biggie, you can fix it. Um, there's really not a way to get around that. If you're blending well, you, you're you gonna have some bleed through sometimes in your image, especially the more ink you use. So that brings me to using your Copic Colorless Blender, which is a must have if you're using Copics. Even if you have 10 Copics, um, definitely invest in this. It's great as kind of an eraser. It doesn't really erase your color like an eraser would, but you can smush your color using the the chisel end. I call it smushing, but you're actually pushing that color back into the lines. And this is the pink from her cheeks that I'm pushing back in. Um, let it dry a little bit between applications. Red tones, obviously darker gray, black tones. They are the hardest to push back in and you have to do it a few times, but you can make it all go away. Obviously lighter colors like yellows, the lighter blues, um, greens are easier to smush back in. And yes, that's a technical Suzanne term, smush. Um, <laughs> And there, I've kind of gotten it to go back in to where I want it to be. Um, and then I would go in now and I would highlight. Obviously, I haven't colored all of my image. Um, two pens I use. One would be the Ink Central's OPEC pen. Love this. And then someone had sent me um, these Sharpie poster paints in white. It has a fine tip, um, which is great for highlighting. You shake it up you pump it and you get a nice dense white color, um, which is why I prefer it more to the Ink Central's pen. Gives you a darker color without having to go over it. And for highlights, on the faces, most of my images on my face, I will give them just a dot on the cheek. It just brings a little attention and light to their, to their face. For clothing, I, I highlight both in the lighter areas and the darker areas, just where I might want someone's eye to be drawn to. If there's a fold in the clothes, I usually go along that fold. It just gives a nice highlight, makes your image look a little bit more dimensional. I don't use a ton. I don't feel that you need to put down a ton of highlights. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'll give them a little bit on their hands and arms. It just kind of adds dimension to your image again. Um, again, excuse my dogs. They um, they never can quite seem to be quiet during the day. <laughs> Too much activity outside for them, I think. So I apologize for the the barking. I also apologize for my cracky voice. I'm um, getting over another sinus infection, so I'm not as clear as I might be. But anyways, so that's how I would do the skin, the highlighting, and of course, one of the ways that you can use your, your colorless blender. There's lots of other ways that I will be showing you over the next few days um, on how to do this. Uh, my next video will be on coloring a Lockhart image and then adding Flower Soft to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. This is how I would, you know, I would obviously finish coloring this and add this to a card. Um, but hopefully that's given you a few tips on how to color with light and dark using your shadows and bringing your image to life. So thank you very much.